Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to Ironclad RC. You got the Pro Boat UL19 on the freaking block. <laughs> All right. We got a, a 40 series motor mount that we're going to install today. This is a carbon fiber offshore electrics 40 millimeter mount that we're actually going to put together. We're going to put the 4082 Oxtein motor on it and epoxy it into the boat. I'm going to show you guys step by step how to do it. Okay. And uh, in the next video with the boat, we're actually going to make a custom servo mount. And in the following video, we'll probably install the hydro. I'm waiting on some connectors to come in for the hydro so we can uh, put it in the U19. It's going to be a freaking beast, you guys. 100 mile an hour build. So stick around, you guys. Stick around. Big B. We're Aaron Clatters. Let's get to it, guys. Let's get to it. So, like I said, I actually carbon fibered the boat in the last video. I can't believe how stiff this hull is now. Before, I could press in on it like that number there, and the whole bottom of the boat would flex, okay? Even right here, stiffer, where I reinforced the seam, it's stiffer, all right? I could actually feel how much more rigid the hull is with this carbon fiber, and it wasn't that freaking hard. So, um, we're going to put together the hard carbon fiber motor mount in just a second, okay? I'm going to go over a few things with you guys. Guys, we actually need to pull all this off this tray because I promised you guys in the last video it would weigh up this this tray. Boom! All right, I got the electronics tray, I got my motor, ESC, and servo off. She's stripped down. Okay, there's nothing left. All right. Yeah, I, I love you guys so much that I actually went through my trash and dug up all my little blocks that I cut out and the brace, okay? And you guys know me. I stole the nuts out of each one of these little blocks because I'm a cheap ass. I saved $8. There was like 10 or 15 little nuts in there. <laughs> you guys think I'm nuts, right? <laughs> Pun intended. I added two ounces, two ounces of carbon fiber to the boat with my whole inlay two ounces all right so let's see what we saved not to mention all the adhesive i sanded off <laughs> 10 ounces boy oh shit <laughs> holy cow so i saved eight ounces of weight all right overall that's a lot in a boat that's a lot that's a mile an hour or two full tilt 100 mile an hour build okay like i said we're putting the hydra on that two, 2200 kv oxtine six pole okay we're gonna we're gonna give this motor every damn thing she wants okay so let's go ahead and get our motor mount out and get it assembled we'll take a quick look at it okay here's your part number from offshore electrics 523b61 i'll have a link in the description if you guys are interested uh, if you're picking out a 40 series motor mount, okay, from Offshore Electrics, he's got several different versions of a 40 series motor mount. You don't have to like read the fine print in the description, but uh, just uh, make sure you're getting the right one. Uh, this one, this particular motor mount right here is designed for a flat bottom, okay, like this boat here it has a flat bottom will be uh epoxy in it into okay if you have a v-hull you're gonna need a v-hull specific motor mount uh, a v-hull 40 series motor mount the motor actually sits lower like lower in the mount okay and a flat bottom motor mount the motor actually sits higher in the mount you feel me okay so we got our carbon fiber rails that's what's going to hold the, the the rear mounting plate and the support ring okay. you actually have to take your your cooling jacket off to get your ring on so keep that in mind when you're installing everything okay um i'm actually i was going to use these button head screws right here but these things tend to actually strip out okay so i'm actually going to use this socket head i think that's what you call it on my build you can use the stock screws so let's go ahead and change all these out okay i'm gonna go ahead and put all these screws in what the freaking what oh <laughs> well it's a good thing i'm using these screws because look at this i've never seen a screw like that they forgot to thread it look <laughs> Oh, that's freaking hilarious. <laughs> when you're assembling your mount, uh, you, you have a few different mounting options, okay? Oh, so... All right, so let's, let's try the top hole 
Okay, let's try the top hole here and the middle hole in the mail. Let's see, let's see where that lands at. Okay, so you might need to actually mess around with yours to try to find the prime position. And so we're gonna go top rail. All right, top rail, middle hole. Like I said, you would want to put Loctite on these screws for your final assembly. Okay, so let's actually see where that motor falls at once we have it in our mount right here. Okay, so we're actually going to have to go up to the top, top hole on the rail, bottom, bottom mounting hole on the actual motor mount itself okay that stuffing tube in my boat it's actually a little bit high so i might even have to cut the darn stuffing tube down to shorten it up i was going to install a new stuffing tube in the boat just start completely fresh you know but um we'll see what happens here we might have to do that and i don't even have a quarter inch stuffing tube at all in my inventory so we got it, bottom hole, top hole on the rail. Let's see where that is. Let's throw it in the boat. Actually, let's go ahead and put this forward mount on so we can hold it in place here. See where our limitation's at. Go ahead and put it in that slot. This right here gives you angle adjustability up and down, okay? Try to match the angle up on your stuffing tube, your flex cable. You feel me? Okay, tighten that bad boy up. Is this freaking... Oh, man, we might not be able to run this ring on this motor. Oh, shoot. Hmm. And as you can see, I've actually fallen a little bit short. You guys see this, the, the flex cable's actually rubbing. It would be rubbing on my my stuffing tube okay and that would create heat so uh, what I'm gonna do which actually is beneficial to my build okay it's gonna give me more room in front of the motor I'm actually gonna cut my stuffing tube off about where that silver line is or a little bit farther back so I can run my motor a little bit farther back so I can actually have more room for ESC up forward okay and that should allow me to run proper gap which you want about anywhere from three to six millimeter gap depending on thickness of your flex cable if you're on a 0 0.150 cable i would go a shorter gap if you're running a 0.187 you can get away with a longer gap okay so i actually have a little tip for you guys if this is you know if, you, if you've got if your motor mounts in its highest position and it's falling short you know um you can actually flip this mount over. You could take these guys right here out, or if you're running one with without water cooling, you could actually flip this motor plate, flip it over, and you'll get more height. Okay, you see how it's designed? See how it's like low? Okay, you can actually flip it over and you get more adjustability. Just an option for you guys. I'll show you a little clip right here. You can like visually and obviously see it's higher okay i'll put it in the boat here and you could definitely tell the motor's higher okay as you guys seen you can actually flip this over okay and get a higher mounted motor okay for certain applications you may need to do that and that's completely fine there's no freaking rule book saying that you have to run your motor mount motor mounting plate this way okay just 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 so you guys know as you guys seen I cut a little bit off my stuffing tube I get perfect alignment now you see that I got my collet unscrewed to its outermost position Keep in mind, you know, you got to unscrew that so you don't want to butt it all the way up to your, your your stuffing tube with it screwed all the way in. Okay, so I got it unscrewed. I'm going to leave maybe, I don't know, about four four millimeter gap. Okay, that 
cutting that stuff into short actually slid my motor back a couple millimeters and uh with this speed control here i really didn't need it slid back it fits in there perfect but but we're going to install the hydra into the boat for a few runs kind of see what the boat will do with the hydra i want to see what this motor will do with the hydra so sliding that motor back actually give me room to put the hydra in this boat a permanent marker i'm gonna just eye my motor alignment okay i'm not gonna uh use measuring sticks or anything like that i'm gonna look at the boat several several angles get it lined up i'm gonna use my black marker to mark out where my motor is gonna be at and then i can actually use those marks to sand where the motor mount's gonna be you want to rough up this mounting surface you know you don't want to apply epoxy to a, a slick mounting surface it's all about the prep okay i'm going to use this bob smith industries 30 minute and i'll probably uh once i get my initial epoxy and get the mount in we'll, we'll remove the motor and break out the chopped up carbon fiber and reinforce the mount so it's structurally like part of the boat you see what i'm saying all right so i'm gonna go ahead and start sanding and uh, roughing it up, prepping it up, and I'll slow it down once I break out the epoxy. I sanded the hull where the motor mount's going to sit and I sanded the rails so, okay it's all prepped up wiped it down with alcohol all right um so let's go ahead and, i'm gonna go ahead and mix up some bob smith slow cure we're gonna apply the epoxy on the mount itself kind of get it in all the little holes there on both sides apply a, a generous amount on the on the deck and then we'll set the mount down and align it okay and then we'll let it cure out so i'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through all that Okay, so I got my first application of epoxy. As you guys seen, I applied it to the rails and I applied it to the deck of the boat. Okay, uh, make sure you got epoxy in the dam holes on your rails. And right now you need to really concentrate on getting the mount in line with the stuffing tube, dead nut center, the stuffing tube. If your stuffing tube's offset, offset the motor. Okay, but it's gotta be dead nuts in line with the stuffing tube or, or you'll get heat issues, okay? Um, I've got proper gap on my on my stuffing tube collet here. I'm gonna run a shallow gap. Okay, you can actually go a little bit more gap if you want, but I run my collet like unscrewed when I set my my, my motor mount up. I unscrew my collet to its outermost position. Okay, that way I know whenever I go to put my my flex cable in my collet, I have room to unscrew it slide it in and then screw it back down okay um as you can see i, I kind of went light but it was kind of a generous light application of epoxy we're going to go through and, and do a second application this is just to make sure everything's in its place it's lined up you know uh, if you want to you can add or put a weight on top of your motor to get good bond i usually use this magnet right here okay weight on there got a couple heavy objects on top okay and remind you that you want to center the flex cable in your stuffing tube if it's off like height wise that's okay because you can actually adjust the height of your mount according okay as long as it's dead nut center that way you know side to side you should be good it's not fully set up so i don't want to take my motor out yet okay because the rails may 
may move around okay so what I'm going to do is take this extremely finely chopped up carbon fiber after I chopped it up the first go around I kept it in the container here and I just kind of took my little scissors and fine you know chopped it up into little hairs if it's got a bunch of like long strands in it it'll be like stringy you know so I get it try to get it as fine as I can okay so we're gonna mix up uh, we're not going to use the Bob Smith we're actually going to use the laminating resin for this it's thinner this stuff's real thick so I'm gonna use this it's thinner and once we add the carbon fiber it'll thicken it up okay it'll be a thick consistency so uh, it's not gonna take much so you don't need to mix up much you get your strength from the carbon fiber not the resin that's why I suggest adding the carbon fiber or fiberglass you can do the same thing with fiberglass mixed up with the epoxy okay so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all the way down the rail kind of pull it on the deck and then I'm gonna pull it up on the mount itself So like you guys seen, I just used my epoxy carbon fiber mix. I went around the outside of the rail on both sides, around the ends of the rail, forward and aft, okay? And uh, it's actually set up, it's still tacky, but it's not sticking to my fingers, okay? So you kind of see how it's like, it's got like little grooves and rough spots, you know what I'm saying? It, it looks good, but... It could be manicured to, to look a little bit better, okay? So what I, I got a little squeeze bottle here with 91% alcohol. I guess you could use 51 or whatever you got. Just put a little bit on your finger. I've showed you guys this in previous videos. Okay, the epoxy won't stick to your finger, and you can actually smooth the epoxy out. Give it a nice-looking finished transition, okay? Go back and forth on it, okay? Uh, you, you, you actually seen me you know run the epoxy carbon fiber mix down on the deck i kind of pulled it out and i ran it up on the the rail on the motor mount kind of uh you know so it's distributing give it a wide base so it's distributing the weight of the motor in a crash you know it'll kind of distribute some of the shock the motor may have during a high speed crash okay so uh like I said, it's just kind of smoothing it out. Just giving it a final, final finished look, you know. I'm going to do the other side. And uh, give it another hour or so to dry. And I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's completely done. D-U-N. <laughs> that alcohol really spread it out nice. You know, gave it a nice slick em up look, you know. So, um... Yeah, it's done, and uh, I may or may not go on the inside and add extra carbon fiber. That's just extra weight that I don't think it freaking needs. That should hold it in the boat. It ain't going no freaking where. So I got the SRD 8000s in there. It fits. Okay. So we're going to be building this boat for speed, all right? Oh, man, I'm freaking stoked. So we actually have room for the Hydra now. Okay, it actually fits up there perfect. We'll be doing that in the upcoming video. All right, in the next video, in the next video with the boat, we'll be installing a servo mount. Okay, we're going to ditch the heavy aluminum. All right, and make a carbon fiber servo mount. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Next video. And I'm up in the air on which way I should go for battery. Okay, battery mounting options. I, I was thinking about using Velcro like Mad Lizard, you know. Um, it, he seems to have pretty good luck with the heavy-duty Velcro for his batteries, you know, moving them back and forth for CG, and they actually stay in place. 
I was actually contemplating on uh, making a custom carbon fiber battery tray, you know, but I might not be able to get some big batteries in the boat. That's the whole reason I installed the carbon carbon fiber inlay so I can put big batteries in the boat if I want to. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you guys are building this boat for speed, I recommend the carbon fiber inlay. I wish I would have done it sooner. All right, this is what happens if you... Uh, if you crash the boat 70, 60, 70, 80 mile an hour with the stock electronics tray in the boat, you'll actually get what you call crazing. This is where the center, this is right up under the motor, where the motor mounted at with the stock electronics tray. This happened at the park pond about a month and a half after I, per well, I received the boat. About a month and a half. I've had it for about a month. And I got a couple little stress cracks here and it just kind of got worse as time went on okay you can actually see the crazing right here this is where the rear blocks were for the mounting tray you can kind of see the outline and the front blocks right here okay i've, I've actually got some uh crazing right here all right now this is just cosmetic it's just basically the paint cracking due to the stress okay in a flip these things when you flip them it's a lot of pressure being put on the boat all that weight shifting with the batteries shifting around and stuff so uh that's kind of why i'm like steering clear of the carbon fiber battery tray and just going with velcro because with a velcro all the weight would be distributed with a battery tray you would basically have a block here a block here and then your tray on top it would be stress here and here where those blocks are mounting your batteries with the velcro like I said, it actually evenly distributes the weight. You feel me? So, uh, you know, if you're building a boat for speed, I, I recommend, I recommend doing something like something similar to this. You don't necessarily have to go carbon fiber. You can go chop strand fiberglass in epoxy. It'll be a little heavier than the the carbon fiber, not quite as strong, but you definitely need the reinforcement. Okay. Um. Yeah, so actually, actually, I've got some crazing and cracking right here, too, where this winglet is. The winglet, by the way, is hollow. Mine is not. I actually filled it with, with, with resin, with, with epoxy, and I had mixed up a really, like, thin application of epoxy with fiberglass hairs mixed in it, and I filled this whole winglet. I was actually sanding some down angle on the front right here. I sanded some down angle, and when I was sanding that down angle in it, I sanded into, through the the winglet, <laughs> like right here. <laughs> uh, but I fixed it, filled it with epoxy, and, and painted it and everything. I wanted some down pressure, down angle, to keep my bow down. And ever since I've done that, I haven't flipped the boat. Ever since I did that. And I put some on the back right here, too. Up. Down on the front, up on the back. Okay, so uh, this boat's gonna be carbon fibered out. We got, we're making the carbon fiber servo mount, carbon fiber battery tray, possibly carbon fiber cooling lines. Oh yeah, she's gonna be ultra light, ultra powerful. Hopefully, a hundred mile plus. Okay, so we got my dead dead nut center. All right, and then you can adjust the height with the back up and down. Okay, so hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you like the build. We'll see you guys next time. Big B. With Ironclad RC.